In this presentation, we'll examine structure of eukaryotic chromosome. In eukaryotic cells, DNA is in the form of chromosomes. So rather than being in a form of double helix that is free to flex and rotate, DNA assumes tightly, tightly packed structure. Double-stranded DNA, if it were on its own, simply an aqueous solution, would simply take too much space. And in fact, a single DNA molecule probably could not fit in a cell. So for that reason, double-stranded DNA is tightly packed and forms a complex with a protein. That protein is called chromatin. So it's a nucleoprotein. Proteins of chromatin are histone or and non-histone chromosomal proteins. Histones form a scaffold of chromatin structure and non-histone proteins are less, less abundant and play a role in genetic regulation. There are five different histone proteins. They are H1, H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. All of them contain a large number of positively charged arginine and lysine residues. These residues form ionic intermolecular interactions, basically salt bridges, with phosphate residues of sugar phosphate backbone of nucleic acids. Two of each histones, H2A, H2B, H3 and H4, form an octamer. That octamer is spiral array of individual polypeptide chains, and it has surface landmarks that guide coiling of double-stranded DNA. Those would be arginine and lysine residues. Uh, double-stranded DNA coils in left-handed helix in which 146 base pairs make 1.65 turns around the histone core. And then uh, the ends are sealed by histone H1. Uh, here on the far right, histone octamer is represented as a single protein. That's how it will be represented in future slides. So all those eight individual units are represented as a single X-shaped unit. And here is a better illustration of nucleosome. So it shows a histone octamer as eight great uh, gray spheres with double-stranded DNA as shown in red and H1 histone shown in green, green sealing the ends of double-stranded DNA to the histone core. It also, uh, H1 histone also organizes 40 to 60 base pair strands that link neighboring nucleosomes. And here is what chromatin looks in water. If chromatin is allowed to swell in water and viewed by uh, means of electron microscope, nucleosomes appear as beads, beads on a string. So individual nucleosomes are connected by short strands of 40 to 60 base pairs of double-stranded DNA. Higher order structure of chromatin involves formation of solenoids. Uh, so nucleosomes in a bead of on string structure coil to form a solenoid. A solenoid has six nucleosomes per turn, and each turn contains about 1200 base pairs and has a diameter of about 30 nanometers. Filaments then form loops uh, and each loop consists between 60 and 150 base pairs. Those loops are then arranged radially about the circumference of a single turn of a chromosome to form a mini band, and then mini bands stack on top of each other to form a chromosome. Here is a summary of higher order structure of uh, tertiary structure of DNA in the order of increasing level of complexity, starting with nucleosome and then uh, formation of solenoid loops, miniband, and finally chromosome.
And here is another way to represent structure of tertiary structure of DNA, starting actually in lower uh, right corner with double-stranded DNA and going all the way to a chromosome. Uh, I took that from the web. You, have, you can see the website. So uh, if you wish, you can visit that website. And also actually in one of the earlier slides, structure of a nucleosome was also taken from the same website. So this completes our brief study of nucleic acids.